Shalom, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you. Today we are going to speak about something very interesting. Water, maim, aqua, de l'eau, wasser, agua. This is all the name for water. You know, we are made of 60% of water. But not only that, you know, in 2025, 60% of the world land mass will have a shortage of water. So this is very important. This is the topic today. And we have, shalom, we have Professor Chaim Chikurel. Is it right? Chikurel. Chikurel. I'm not a professor, I'm only a doctor, but okay. <laughs> oh yeah, doctor. Okay, so Dr. Chaim Chikurel. And this is just wonderful. Thank you for coming. This is we are going to speak about all this topic of water. And um, so uh, Dr. Chaim, He's an engineer in chemical and environment and he's been for 46 years, you know, in the experience of the water field. He does research in production and engineering in the chemical process industry and water and also water waste. And this is very important because this we are going to look at these things today. He is responsible for initiating, managing and scientifically following different EU funded water and we uh, waste water treatment. He works also for Mekorot, which is the water yeah, national I, uh, a consultant. That's it. And also he specializes in drinking water, influence of filtration and disinfectation, disinfectation, which is again very important. And uh, not only that, he is also the first water and wastewater engineer with Teva Pharma Pharmaceutical, which is very important again because you understand that when the water has to be reused, there is chemical and some work needs to be done on that. And also you are the first engineer who produced the MBR, which is a membrane process for industrial uh, waste in Israel. So this uh, is... Yeah, I uh, was uh, uh, the initiat uh, initiator of this uh, process. Uh, I brought the idea from uh, Italy who, uh, where uh, it was already practiced and afterwards uh, it was uh, taken uh, uh, by uh, the uh, industrial uh, municipality in the south of Israel. Mm -hmm. And today all the industrial compounds there have uh, these membrane bioreactors which uh, very much helps to reuse the water. Mm -hmm. And is Israel who is the most really at the forefront of all this uh, initiative about reusing the water, isn't it? Exactly. Mainly uh, the reuse is done uh, in the municipal field, uh, mainly by Mekorot, uh, which uh, they take uh, the biggest uh, wastewater treatment plant in Israel, which is uh, Shafdan, which is mm -hmm. near Tel Aviv, around uh, 160 million cubic meters a year, and they uh, reuse it uh, by uh, a natural process, which is called soil aquifer treatment. Uh, we reach the uh, level of uh, uh, turning the wastewater to drinking water, which is uh, the future for all the world. Uh, the technology now exists and it's proven and uh, we are also one uh, of uh, the few pilots in the world where mm -hmm. this was uh, checked. And, uh, this is, Israel is at the top, isn't it? Of, yeah, of reusing. Uh, Israel is in the top of uh, water. We, uh, we reuse uh, almost 90% of our wastewater. <laughs> which is huge. Yes. Well, I was looking at the percentage. The U.S. does almost nothing. Yeah, that's uh, one of the problems in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they are uh, starting very seriously considering it. Mm -hmm. As I said, also as uh, water reels for agri agriculture and water reels for drinking water. In Israel, when I say 90%, it's only for agriculture. Up mm -hmm. to now, nothing has been done for uh, drinking water. It was only piloting. Mm -hmm. In the States, uh, lately, they uh, also did uh, piloting and convincing the people uh, uh, that they can drink safely uh, 
treated wastewater. Mm -hmm. And the future, I think, is uh, the, the drinking uh, at the end of, the, of our wastewater. Now, we might need to explain a bit these yeah. things to the people because yeah. like, there is some very special name. I worked very hard this week to be able to understand all this technical thing, which is, we can just explain it uh, simply. But the thing that maybe, first of all, give us a bit of what's happening in the world, because there is really a water crisis. And so yes. if you explain a bit to, yeah. to our viewers. Uh, first of all, the biggest problem is uh, what we call uh, the equator area, which means uh, all uh, Africa, Asia, uh, Asia Minor, uh, South America, all the area which is uh, around the equator uh, is uh, lacking uh, water. They have uh, severe, very severe, India mainly, very severe uh, uh, water shortage. Uh, South Africa, very, yes. very severe. I heard that there is 17 countries who have, which is almost like one quarter of the world population, exactly. who are really in trouble. Yes, yes, in uh, certain degrees. The part which is not in trouble is mostly the north and uh, very south uh, of the world. But uh, as we know, uh, with the climate change, and mm -hmm. uh, it can also uh, come to that, that there too, they won't uh, have uh, any water. Mm -hmm. uh, the climate is changing. And uh, we know that uh, this uh, strip that I said around the Equator. world, it's widening all the time. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it was uh, more or less, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Egypt, India, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, South, uh, uh, South Af um, Africa and uh, South America, mm -hmm. yeah. But now it's starting to be also uh, South Europe. So mm -hmm. it's starting uh, the United States, all the area which is between California yes. mm -hmm. and uh, New Mexico, all this, uh, all around, uh, including Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, so they need some, uh, to they do something. They don't have uh, water, so they mm -hmm. are trying to find uh, solutions now. Could could I ask you just a few words? Because like there is a few words that definition that we don't know. What is like, for example, day zero? Okay, the day zero is the time, uh, for example, uh, it was uh, almost day zero for uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. where they really don't have any precipitation. There is no uh, drink, drinkable water, and uh, people, uh, wow. they cannot uh, drink anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's day zero, day and zero. Uh, this can come as I said, in South Africa, in India, uh, mainly the south of India. Oh, I heard that in India, that they were having also this problem of day yes. zero, and it's yeah, like, that's sure, it, it's like, sure. okay. And what is a high water stress level also? When we use this word, what is high water stress level? High water stress level is that uh, uh, your groundwater is polluted. You don't have any uh, water source from the ground. You don't have any precipitation. Uh, your uh, uh, rivers are polluted. Uh, and uh, there is uh, less and less water, uh, drinkable so, water. So the country is uh, under Although, stress. for example, if you, we take the example of India, okay, they have monsoons, but monsoons mean a lot of uh, water uh, suddenly, and you cannot uh, use it. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to help them uh, with this by uh, taking monsoon water, filtering, and so on. But again, all this has to be developed. Uh, the groundwater, one of the biggest problems of the groundwater pollution is that we take the water, we use it for the industry, and then take it back to the groundwater, so we pollute the mm -hmm. groundwater. Mm -hmm. No precipitation, no dilution, and at the end, we don't have uh, any sources. Mm -hmm. All the sources are... And, and you're right, and in Israel, you had this crisis of water. You had drought, 
you have the economy growing, the agriculture exactly. growing, you have yes. 6,000, no, 600,000 people in 1948, and yeah. now it's almost, almost 9 ten, million. Uh, 10 million, yeah. 9 million, ten, yeah. exactly. Okay. So, so what did Israel, okay. you had problems, but you find solution, didn't you? Okay, uh, the first thing is agriculture. They use, uh, agriculture uses a lot of water. And yes, uh, I didn't know. most of the countries, uh, at least developed countries, are still using, uh, I would say, uh, a very archaic uh, method uh, of uh, uh, t trench irrigation, which means you, you fill a trench with water and then uh, you irrigate. Uh, which was in uh, ancient Egypt times or Babylonian times mm -hmm. also, it was the same. <laughs> so uh, this has to be changed and Israel was the first to do it with the drip irrigation. We are the first in the world in this uh, uh, technique. Uh, afterwards, there were, were, you, were you part of that? No, 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 no. no. Okay, they're just, <laughs> I know that, uh, you know, you are researching and also no, I was no, wondering. Uh, this was another. And then uh, you have the greenhouse technique. This also was uh, developed uh, more or less in Israel. The greenhouse technique uh, uh, helped a lot uh, with the agriculture to use less water, more effective uh, methods. Uh, and then uh, uh, besides that, uh, we have also the rain uh, to make it uh, the rain more, uh, to precipitate uh, uh, better by uh, uh, reservoir. Uh, uh, no, by putting no. Uh, uh, argenton nit nitrate uh, uh, particles, which makes uh, the oh. clouds uh, more heavier, and you have also more rain uh, precipitation. Reservoirs, reservoir is very important. And on the other hand, as uh, we said, we had. Uh, Till a uh, few years, all our groundwater was also very polluted, or almost very polluted. So if we take uh, 30 years uh, from now, and that's where uh, 30 or 40 years, where I started also with Teva as a wastewater engineer, it was a time where even in the United States, the wastewater was thrown in the rivers, and the solid waste uh, was uh, put in the ground and so on. And that's where we started to uh, practice modern uh, uh, wastewater Wastel. engineering, mm -hmm. treating the water, separating the streams, treating them uh, uh, not all together. Uh, so the uh, industrial wastewater treatment is very important because that's the one which afterwards uh, uh, together with the agricultural uh, pollution and also other uh, types of pollutions, uh, pollute your groundwater. Mm -hmm. This is very All important. right, okay. Because, you know, when I was studying a bit this week, I, I didn't realize how much water is used for the agriculture. Yeah. That is much more than the domestic, sure. the one that we use the and household. And I will tell you, for example, if we take uh, an industry which is very common in developing countries like uh, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, and, and uh, so on, it's the textile industry. And the mm -hmm. textile industry uses tons of water. A uh, standard uh, waste uh, plant uh, can use uh, 10,000 cubic meters per day of water, which is huge. Now, what do they do? They take it from the ground, they clean it because for the textile you have to have very clean water, a reverse osmosis, so you have also salt, you throw it this, uh, to the ground, and then you uh, process the water, and then you have a dirty or polluted water. What do you do? Either to the river or the groundwater. So all the time the groundwater is polluted. This is an example. A mm -hmm. lot of things are mm -hmm. done. Is it also because we have m much more population, so it, there is more stress? It is so? also uh, because we have much more population, and uh, it could be also 
because uh, we have a, a more uh, industrial uh, production. Uh, if we take countries like uh, India and uh, China, they are producing all the time very cheap products, mm -hmm. which is sold afterwards to developing countries. But the pollution is not uh, uh, being done in the developing country, mm. but in the undeveloped country. That is, uh, we are exporting the pollution this way. Mm. And uh, this is one of the problems mm. also. Mm. But it's uh, not a problem if uh, the water can be treated mm -hmm. uh, on the spot, even in the uh, in, uh, develop, uh, un, uh, underdeveloped countries, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, uh, they can uh, live with it. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, it's okay to produce uh, a product in an underdeveloped countries mm -hmm. because of the wages, uh, but uh, let's uh, leave it only if, uh, uh, for the wages. The rest should be treated. All the water should be uh, treated. I know a good example, maybe it's like a, a promotion, but uh, mm -hmm. I was in contact with IKEA, you know, a Sweden yes. company. Mm -hmm. IKEA has a principle where they do not uh, buy anything from a developing country if they don't make sure that uh, the water is treated, the air is treated, they have a lot of standards. Mm -hmm. That is the method that the developing countries which are producing in the underdeveloped countries have to take as a stand. Mm -hmm. So the standards is changing. Yeah, then, then uh, uh, this, uh, the same industries uh, will be obliged to mm -hmm. treat mm -hmm. their uh, mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. Which means that they have to look after the population at exactly. the end of the and exactly. have respect, exactly. respect if, human uh, life. If they treat their water uh, and the groundwater is not polluted and there is enough uh, water for everybody, then there is no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that uh, the uh, rain uh, we have less and less rain, but uh, I uh, heard uh, in uh, one place that there is enough water for everybody. The problem is to find it and uh, mm -hmm. to manage it so that everybody can uh, mm -hmm. uh, profit out of it. Now, when you speak about that, it reminds me the desalinization. Again, a big project, project has been done in Israel. And like when you look at the water, uh, I was looking at an amazing, uh, I don't know if I will find it again, amazing picture where you could see that it was the rainwater, the groundwater was very tiny and the ocean, the water, the seawater was very big. So obviously we have to take water from the ocean. Again, Israel is at the forefront exactly. of all these things. Uh, the desalination is uh, one of uh, the best solution in the last uh, 20, 30 years, uh, it uh, helped a lot uh, to mainly uh, to Israel. We are using now almost 50% of our drinking mm. water mm. from desalination. And uh, it's true that the desalinated uh, concentrate is uh, put back uh, in, uh, in the sea, uh, but the dilution uh, at this moment is uh, okay, it is not uh, polluting it, but we are trying also to find solutions to take out the, this pollution of the mm -hmm. which concentrated is, stream. Which is called the bream. Is it bream? Uh, brine. Oh, brine, brine. sorry. Yes, so it's called brine. the brine, yeah. So uh, Israel was a very good example. Uh, it was the first. Uh, a country which desalinated water at a very attractive price. And uh, the world now is going this direction. You know, there is this Israeli desalination uh, you industry, five, you have five which plans. is uh, world mm -hmm. known. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are everywhere, they are trying. And besides that, there are a lot of uh, uh, startup companies in Israel, huge uh, amounts of startup companies which are trying to do all kinds of uh, processes, projects, so that people can uh, 
uh, drink uh, better water mm -hmm. and so on. You're right, that's the one even from the air. Exactly. Uh, it's one like a of new the thing. companies are uh, taking the humidity of the air mm -hmm. and making out of it water, mm -hmm. drinking it's water. It's amazing. amazing yeah. It's amazing. I saw something also very nice. I mean, this is, I think this is for you to see how Israel is like on the forefront of so many uh, new way of thinking and like the water is so important. And like you can see that they are not just keeping it, you are not just keeping it for you. You are in, you know, really uh, sharing all this knowledge exactly. to many people exactly. because you are a professor uh, or a doctor, sorry, you are a doctor in the Hebrew University and you have many students who come from all around the world. Exactly. So you are touching Mexico and India and yeah, Africa. China, even, China. Uh, Nepal, uh, a lot of uh, students. I uh, had already uh, uh, around 30, 40 students from all parts of the world, even the United States and Canada and France also. And uh, the idea is really uh, more and more uh, to uh, to share our knowledge, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I go to a lot of conferences. Uh, uh, I was uh, in India three times uh, uh, where I gave uh, also uh, workshops in uh, uh, Africa, in Ghana, in uh, Mexico City, I was twice uh, to give workshops on natural treatments and so on. Yeah, we are uh, trying to help uh, as much as we can, mm -hmm. not only our country, but uh, all humanity. Yeah. I know, this is beautiful. Now, I heard about this membra membrane, membrane... Uh, yeah, membrane processes. Processes. So could you explain a bit, because you've been one of Ooh, yeah, uh, about it. the membrane process is a sort of a filter, but it is filtering, it depends, it could be ultrafiltration or nanofiltration or reverse osmosis. It's a filtering at the level of a nanometers, a micrometers, or Armstrong's, which is a the reverse osmosis, which means uh, we are taking ions out. Uh, so it's a degree of uh, a filtration, a barrier, uh, and uh, this is uh, very useful. Uh, it has been uh, very, very useful also in uh, industrial wastewater treatment and mainly in drinking water treatment. One problem is, uh, uh, is still that it's expensive, it needs uh, expertise, a lot of expertise, and also it uh, pollutes a little bit because if we take that we have this brine that mm -hmm. we don't know always where to put it, and if it is an industrial brine that we took out all, all our uh, micropollutants, things like this, then what we do have we to do something with them. Mm -hmm. Lately, uh, there are new techniques uh, which are also competing and competing also uh, uh, economic-wise. Uh, uh, these are techniques of what we call advanced oxidation processes, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, a combination of uh, uh, so, destroying, you're kind of destroying yeah, the uh, waste? It's a, uh, the, the idea is to cut the complex uh, mm -hmm. chemicals mm -hmm. so that afterwards the second stage is always biological. So, uh, it's like uh, if you have a food and you cannot digest it well, I put as an enzyme or something, mm -hmm. and now you can digest mm -hmm. it more mm -hmm. uh, easier. That's the idea, that is, we have a waste. A clever, clever idea. We are mm. digesting it mm. for the biology mm. to uh, mm. uh, take it more easily. What we call it, we make it more biodegradable. Mm -hmm. I can Very digest it better. Now, with all these amazing things that's happening uh, in Israel and like exporting these beautiful stories, what is the, f the future, good, bad? Extraordinary? <laughs> well, the future depends also 
in the different uh, governmental uh, uh, decisions uh, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, if uh, the government as uh, it's done now in Israel or United States or Europe and so on they have uh, already strict standards for drinking water uh, agricultural uh, irrigation water or industrial wastewater and uh, somebody is uh, really watching uh, that things are done uh, well uh, and the techniques are already available uh, and it's not only a very complicated techniques as I told you it could be and that's what we did also lately could be what we call natural systems meaning you can use your nature your ground mm. as a biofilter as a source of taking the micropollutants out and the, but it cannot be only because when you do it only so you have to ground, make it like you have to mix it with mm. the complex systems so uh, we hope the governments even in the developing countries with the help of the uh, developed countries will find the money, the uh, resources to make it uh, done. And mainly, it's not only technology, as we said before. Uh, people have to know how not to waste water, mm -hmm. uh, to be a water conservative uh, country. That's very important. I hope that you really enjoy that. We can make a difference with what we do with our water. And Israel is really at the forefront of a lot of new technology and to help the world. And this is wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. And I hope that you enjoy this program. And from Dr. Hai and from me, bye and see you next week.